Well, morning, everybody. Welcome. So good to see you. It's a really special morning. You know, preparations for this started actually months ago. And as far as practical setup was concerned, people were here yesterday at about lunchtime, putting out the tables and putting out the flowers. It seems that there's been a night shift. I'm not sure. But a lot of work has gone into just making a big welcome and they're preparing this morning for us. Now, this is a special event. You might have noticed that already. So it's a special event linked to our New Life Art Show. Now, all week long, we have had this incredible show unfolding, and we've had work in here. How many of you came? How many of you visited? Fantastic. Well, I think a number of you, in fact, were exhibiting. So welcome back, and it's great that we can now have the last event of our New Life art show in the room where it's been happening um, all week long. So you're going to hear a bit more about the show. You're going to meet some of the people who are exhibiting and hearing more of the story behind some of the work that has been here. We put on events like this every few months at Oak Hall Church, and we just kind of call them guest events. In the olden days, we used to call them Oak Hall Cafes. But we've got an Oak Hall Cafe now, and it's open all the time. So it's a guest event today, and we're so glad um, that you're here. We've had some incredible work. Um, there's Esme sitting here somewhere with this uh, new life as uh, an elephant is surviving uh, in the jungle. We've had these kind of ideas of spring, and these paintings were about here um, yesterday. We've had Abby with this beautiful image of a pierced hand reaching out to a broken person. You could have looked at her um, sketchbooks as well and seen some of her process and between, behind the work that she was putting together. Lucy, this was about a rescue, a moment in history. A man is, is overboard and he's sinking and there's a, another hand reaches out and draws him into safety. 
there was an image just over here in your corner. Um, it was from Brixton Prison. Some of the guys there just sitting around. But surprisingly, in Brixton Prison, there's a person present. And in the explanation of the work on Friday night, some of you heard John explaining about how, well, in prison, there are people, yes, they're inside, but they meet the one who brings freedom. And in this unexpected image, there is a person sitting there, Jesus in the image. Well, we're going to be thinking more about the claims of Jesus and his impact on different people's lives and different people's art as this next hour and 10 minutes or so unfolds. Here's a piece of work that I love. This is by a guy called Adam Green. Um, he's uh, got a gallery. If you ever want to find it, it's in Rygate. It's right next to All About Eve. And his gallery is called Adam's Gallery. So look out for Eve. Adam's not far away. And he's painted this. It's um, an image that is, is painted just with a brush and uh, just kind of geometric shapes. You can come and have a look at this afterwards if you want to. So it's been a fantastic week. And uh, thank you so much for those who've been a part of it. And thank you so much for coming now to enjoy, really, what we're saying is kind of the, the highlight of it all as we uh, get some of those who've been involved and hear some of their stories. So feel at home, keep topping up the, uh, your, uh, your cups and make sure the plates are clear by the end of the, uh, end of the morning. And we're going to have a conversation, really, this morning. Just to point out another thing. Look at this. It's fantastic, isn't it? Well, they were, there's a number of people who have been uh, contributing to this. All of the artists have signed one of the petals. Um, on each day of the show, different people drew onto it. And then on the uh, Friday, it was all put together. And a kind of community, collaborative art piece. You can read about the community f flower just here as you leave a little bit later on. Well, I would love you to welcome two of those who've been involved in planning all of this. And they are Kate Norman and Faye Mayo. So let's welcome them on the stage and a big round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Have a seat. Yeah, hello. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, welcome. We can relax now. This is good. <laughs> oh, Kate, you've had a major role in arranging all of this. And uh, how's it gone from your point of view? I think it's been amazing. We've had such a warm and lovely response to this show. Um, a lot of people have said that as they've come in the room, there's been a sense of real peace, mm. and James put together a, a lovely um, music set, and it was just playing softly in the background, and the beautiful artwork, so there's plenty of space to go around, and there was just a really nice sense in here, and we had so many people so visiting, it was really encouraging. I think there's about 500 odd bodies coming into the room, Amazing. but many of them on for a second or third or yes. fourth time. So. <laughs> 100 people five times. <laughs> yeah. it. it could well have been, but that's just so encouraging in itself. And people um, would chat to us about how they've been really moved by the art and really challenged by it and really inspired by it. So a, a number of people saying, I need to get my paints out again. Oh, <laughs> I think yeah, many of us, there's creativity in, in all of us. Um, and just seeing the sorts of creativity that um, we've had this week has been really inspiring as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, Kate. Oh, well, Faye, maybe you could tell us about some of those involved. Well, we, we decided to reach out to all the local art groups that we could think of and, and, and search so that we could find, you know, get as many artists to take part as, as they as could. And we gave them the title New Life and asked them to submit um, a piece of work, you know, or three pieces to the show. Um, and then, of course, we knew, because um, I'm an artist, I knew a number of artists as well. So there were a few people like Adam um, that I would go, please put a piece of work in the show, <laughs> and uh, a few others as well. So that was, that was great. Yeah, and great to have so many people just submitting work for people that you've never met before, yeah. wanting to be part of the exhibition. It was yeah, really exciting. Tremendous. And how many artists all together? Oh, we had 40 artists wow. all together in the room, yeah, yeah, which was wonderful. Some submitted one piece, some submitted three, yeah. so yeah, it was great. Oh, wow. Well, we're going to look forward to hear more about it. Let's introduce Lydia to us. We've got some amazing um, creative people among us um, with drama and sculpture and all kinds, but also music. This is Lydia Callahan, 
And uh, let's welcome her, shall we? <laughs> Lydia, tell us about the song you're going to sing to us. Uh, yeah, so this is one of my favorite songs. Um, it's not written by uh, a Christian artist, but I think it really digs deep into um, kind of what brings us new life. So um, it's called Agape, and it's um, about someone who has found love, and for them, that's their new life, but they're they're scared and they're worried that they're going to lose that love and they don't know what's going to happen to them if they do. So it's a quite an unstable bit of kind of searching, worrying kind mm. of thought process going through this song. Mm. Um, Thank yeah, you. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Lydia. Thank you.
Lydia, that was really amazing, really beautiful. We're going to have Lydia back to sing to us again in a moment. But let's invite another member of the team up. Let's invite Ron to come and join us. So welcome, Ron. Come and join us up here. Yeah, big welcome. Thanks, Ron. That's the last clap I'll get today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, welcome. Welcome up here. So, Ron, one of the exciting things about you three is um, not only are you organizing this with a, a team of others as well, but also you're one of the exhibitors here. Mm -hmm. So um, tell, us, tell us about what it is that you are putting together and what your work is about. Uh, okay. Um, is this on? It is, yeah, it should be. Let's just check. A little, little light, yeah, all good, all good. Hi, uh, well, for those just you put don't it know, on your chin, Ron. Just okay, yeah. hi, that's better. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a retired architect. When uh, this new life here, like theme that. came out of the show, uh, my mind went back several years, I'm going back about 15 years, when uh, I was involved in a project um, which rang a bell. Basically, it was a regeneration project uh, in an industrial area. Yeah. And we were bringing new life into derelict property. And then I thought, well, the project that we did is really a metaphor of the gospel. And um, we were approached by a church, and they said, we have a vision to reach out to young adults in their 20s. And we want a, a building which will be totally different, exciting, innovative, that would um, be culturally uh, appropriate for this age group. Um, so I got quite excited about that, to be honest. Um, so we took the brief. Sorry, yeah, we took the brief and... <laughs> we took the brief and they wanted a, a place where people could go and meet. They wanted it based around uh, a big cafe area, multi-use uh, cafe area. They wanted to have a creche for children, and they wanted other things, a Christian media center and stuff like that. So uh, we took the brief, and uh, we went away to design it. Fantastic. And, and people have come in because you've kind of shocked us because we thought, yeah, art, sculpture, of course, uh, painting, yep, we'll do that. Bit of watercolour, all right. Olive oils, excellent. Even community art, but then, of course, architecture. And it's been great reading through kind of your philosophy of design and the ideas of kind of breaking the mould of it not just being a functional thing, but something that kind of leaps out of the uh, landscape and pointing to something unexpected and, uh, and bringing a new life there to that place of regeneration, but also offering a message that brings new life to people too. It's brilliant, Ron. So did, how many years did you work as an architect? Just to get back on you. <laughs> about 40 odd <laughs> yeah and and of all the buildings you chose this one to be the one you shared with us well it seemed very appropriate yeah yes brilliant ron well thank you so much i'd really encourage you if you're interested in architecture come up on the stage afterwards and just read through the thinking and the reflections that have gone into this it resonates with us i think as a church family too because this you're sitting on a bomb site you know, in the Second World War, a bomb fell on here, and this whole area was destroyed. And then there was a, a big printing works built that was morphed into a, a kind of office block. And it wasn't the finest corner of Catrum Architecture, was it? But some of us might feel that it's, it's, quite, it's quite beautiful now, what is here. We're, of course, not in love with buildings, but we do feel absolutely excited about what we pray would be the message resonating out, resonating out from this place. Well, thank you, Ron. I haven't finished it. Oh, right then. It's all right. <laughs> you asked me <laughs> yesterday to say what the building was trying to do. Well, in four words, it was reaching out and drawing in. Brilliant. And it was really <clears throat> reaching out to the public and drawing the public into the building. A bit like the gospel, which is about reaching out to people and drawing them to Jesus. Yeah. And throughout the building, there are references and cues 
that would speak uh, about different aspects of uh, sharing the gospel. Uh, well, I obviously haven't got time to talk about it now. <laughs> Go, give us an example. Next time. Yeah, no, give us one example. Yeah, it'd be great. Well, one example, we had uh, a lot of glass on the frontage, basically very transparent so people could see into the building yeah. uh, and see what was going on. There was nothing to hide. Uh, they wanted people to see that this was a place which was vibrant and full of life and people. And the internal design uh, was a real, quite a juxtaposition of different shapes, which gave a very exciting and um, a beautiful in, in, in interior, so that when people went in, they could share the spectacle of the architecture. And that's what the gospel's about, sharing the wonder of Jesus and knowing him. So this building was trying to portray a new life in an old uh, derelict site so that people could come in who are in spiritual darkness and experience new life in Jesus. Brilliant, Ron. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> that is really, that's really thrilling. Thank you so much. Well, let's come to Faye. So, Faye, you, um, you've been making sculpture. I have been living close to Faye because we've been married for 30 years this year. So, it's a <laughs> that's, that applause is for Faye. Thinking, how did she do it? How did she do it? I don't think so. I nearly, I nearly, she doesn't know, but I nearly ended it all today. Just elbowed this bowl. And it just did one of those teetering things and then just back in place. Her back was turned. Kate saw it. She didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Kate. Yeah, got my back. But Faye, um, I saw people kind of gazing into your sculpture. I actually uh, took a short video this morning um, of of the interior of one of, of this piece here. Maybe we can get on the move and just look inside. And I saw, maybe you were among them, people who came in and just were gazing at the different pieces and then came to Faye's work and kind of leaned in and tried to make out, you know, what this is all about. Um, so do come as well and have a look at this yourself in 3D um, later on if you'd like to. But Faye, um, Tell us about, how do, you, how do you make these pieces? Well, I'll tell you how I make that one that you focused on now. Okay. And if anybody wants to know about the leafy one, they'll have to ask me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that one there. Um, so um, I often start by kneading um, some clay and um, to get all the inconsistencies sort of um, out and air out. And, um, and then uh, I stop when I'm happy with a kind of spiral that's happened, a sort of shape within that, that lump of clay. And then I'll put my hand in and start to scoop out um, a form. Um, and then from there, I roll sort of worms, as it were, of clay. Um, and I, I press um, leaves, leaves into them sometimes and seed heads, um, sort of beautiful imprints. Um, and sometimes I've scratch marks through them and I get all these different textures and I build up layer by layer. So you can actually see the building process in the piece. And the piece is like a story and as I'm making, I'm reflecting on the fact that life for, for me, for us, is made out of many different seasons. And, um, you know, we go through beautiful seasons in life and we go through some harsh seasons. And all those seasons make us the person who we are in a way. Um, so that's something I reflect on while I'm making the piece. And then I smooth the piece from inside and I get the form with a tool, where, which is like a sort of kidney-shaped tool, and I smooth inside and push the form out and get the form that I want um, that way. Yeah. Um, so that's how I make in clay the piece. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and when you finish, obviously it doesn't look any longer like clay. So what have you done to the piece to give it all of this vibrant colour? Okay. Well, you should know babes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> 
okay, for everybody else, <laughs> I'll answer. Andy should be able to answer for me, really. <laughs> but um, so after I've made the piece in clay, it goes into the kiln and it goes up to um, 1,020 degrees centigrade. Then it becomes ceramic, so I can't put it in a bucket and melt it back down now. Um, and then um, I take it out of the kiln and I start to glaze the piece. So I use glazes on the inside of the piece. Many of the glazes are like layers of combinations that I've experimented with over the years. Um, so some of the glazes have taken 20 years to kind of discover. Um, and then it goes back in the kiln, and then it goes up to 1,260 degrees centigrade, and the glaze starts to sort of flow down the inside of the piece, and the glass in it melts, and so something interesting that I can't quite control <laughs> happens in the kiln, which is the scary bit. So when you open the kiln door then, you're sort of a bit nervous. But, um, and then if the piece has survived that process, which sometimes it hasn't, um, then I, I often would then... Um, start to write uh, with my little um, stubby brush, my short brush, um, inside the piece with this um, gold luster, which is actually gold suspended in liquid. Um, and I paint it on three layers, go on each line that I do, otherwise it might burn out. And it goes back in the kiln mm -hmm. and um, up to about 800 centigrade mm -hmm. and is then finally complete. It's amazing, yeah. it's amazing. Well, I feel excited about it, even though I do I know some of the secrets. So, Faye, tell us what it's all about. Like, what are you saying through this work? You've told us a bit about it, about the seasons of life, about the joys and the sorrows and the brokenness and the together things too. But what else is it about? Well, um, a lot of my work is very inspired by a conversation that Jesus had with a lady um, at the well in uh, John 4. Um, it's, it's about, um, and I suppose there are other Bible verses that inspire my piece as well. So it's reflecting on the fragility of life, um, and, but that we can um, contain something that's beautiful and that's everlasting, which is, for me, the relationship with God that the Bible speaks about. And the lady that we were, were referring to, the non-leafy one behind you, um, the taller one, um, she was actually based on the story of that lady. So I thought about her life as I made her. And Jesus met her at the well, and he had this conversation with her. And he basically told her, I know everything about you that there is to know. All the things you're hiding, I know about them. And uh, this lady was up at the well in a, a time of day when nobody came to the well, you know. So she was hiding from people. And um, he, she was like, you know, who are you that knows all this stuff about me? And she was overwhelmed and she was like, you must be the Messiah or, you know, the, the one that's to come uh, that she knew about from the scriptures. And um, so I was very excited about this piece. I thought about her story as I made her. But then I wanted to fill the inside of her with the words that Jesus spoke to that lady, which I've had to write out because every time I get up in front of people, I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> so I'm going to read them to you, and that will save you from having to stick your head inside the piece and fathom it yourself. <laughs> So um, he, said, he said to her, everybody that drinks from this well is going to be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. It's, what, a wonderful, what a wonderful account of a life transformed through meeting Jesus and captured into that piece of sculpture. Faye, thank you so much for, for sharing that with us, really. Well, Kate, you've had a number of pieces uh, in the exhibition, and um, I've enjoyed um, seeing them. To start with, they were hidden around the back here, and uh, then later for the last day, we put them right in this prominent spot. One of these pieces is yours, um, this piece of the, of the baptism, and we'll come to that one, I think, in a, in a few moments' time. But... It's, it's, they're magnificent paintings, but there were some smaller ones. Um, maybe you could uh, just tell us um, about each of these. So what's this about? It's, it's some kind of something being torn. Um, yes, this is, it's called the torn veil, or you might want to call it a torn curtain. And 
I was really inspired by our theme this year, actually. That's mm. what made me want to do this. We had the theme of new life. And our art show came straight on the back of Easter. So we had Easter Sunday, and, the, we had, and then the following day we were setting up for this, and then we had a whole week of the art show. So it was really inspired by the, um, the story of Easter. And, and this particular piece was inspired by um, perhaps one of the saddest days, <laughs> which was the day when Jesus died. Mm. And he, he was crucified on a cross, and it wasn't just an ordinary man, dying on a cross or dying in any way and something crazy started happening in the place where he was which was Jerusalem and the earth shook and the whole sky went dark and people came to life it was all a bit crazy but another thing happened in the temple which was the place where people were um, trying to come close to God but they couldn't quite get close to God because there was this curtain that was in the way that, that was separating people from God but at the, t at the very moment when Jesus died, this curtain from top to bottom was torn in two. And I really wanted to get the sense that behind this curtain was something glorious and beautiful and wanting to break out and wanting to break into, um, into all of our lives, not only just 2,000 years ago, but even now and today. And that resonates mm -hmm. beyond that single day in history and mm -hmm. can, can permeate our lives today. Mm. It's, it's such a simple image. And yet many people just commented on how c captivating that is and the light kind of breaking through it and the hope that that represents. Well, you, you, you have actually done a series of three. Um, and so this was the, the second image. And uh, so tell us, tell us about this one, Kate. So thank you. This, this happened a couple of days later. And perhaps this is not so much of a sad day. This is perhaps <laughs> one of the greatest days in history, yeah. if you like. So um, I tried to use that same sense of, of light and wanted to think about the day that we celebrate at Easter when Jesus rose from the dead. And of course, when he needed to be buried when he, was, when he died, and he was buried in a, like a cave type thing, not quite in the same way as we're buried today. He was buried in a cave, and um, three days later, that cave was empty, and not because he'd been stolen, the body had been stolen or had evaporated, but because he'd risen to new life, and mm. that is such a powerful, um, powerful story, and that's, uh, it also means that we too can have new life because mm. he rose from the dead. So mm. I wanted to do, to do, to get that picture there, and actually this, this picture, um, I started painting together with a friend of mine, um, Sean. And Sean and Josie and Faye and I, we all get together every so often and get creative together and have a cup of tea together. And none of the other girls could make it, so Sean and I sat and just did some creative stuff together. Um, and it was at that time that we, we painted this together, and it was really lovely to be able to reflect on these things together. Yeah, that's amazing. Look, just, just to kind of... We, we want to hear about one more painting in a second, but just to say there's a toast rack on your table... And it's an unusual toast rack because there's no toast. But there's other refreshments instead. But in the toast rack, on each table, there's a little book that is about the resurrection. And it's the heart of the Christian faith that, yes, there's a God who's there, and he's come in the person of Jesus, and he's died, and he's risen from the dead. Not just the idea of him continues, um, or that, well, we can kind of resurrect Jesus by trying to live like Jesus. No that Jesus actually died and he actually rose from the dead in history. And this, doc, this little booklet is a really helpful one to help us to find more about the historical evidence for the resurrection. And if you're here thinking about whether this is something true in this or not, well, it all hinges on the resurrection of Jesus. That's why, Faith, that's why Kate chose that painting to be the, the, main, the middle one of the three that she's done. And so feel free to just take that booklet. All of those booklets in the toast rack are a gift. So please, take it home. But something very exciting is happening with, with Sean um, this, this evening, I think. And it's related to your, your third painting, um, Kate. I wonder whether your conversation over the resurrection as you were painting um, had anything to do with it. But um, t tell us about this third painting. Yep, so this, um, this third painting um, depicts 
in some way, in some measure, <laughs> um, baptism, which once again is a, a, um, a picture of new life. And, a, and even though we ourselves don't necessarily die and get born again in this moment, well, hopefully not even necessarily at all get, <laughs> die and get born again in that moment, in the moment of baptism, we're united with Jesus and we um, die with him and are resurrected with him into a new life. Um, and it's a really beautiful thing. I love baptisms. I'm so excited about Sean and Kezia's mm. baptism tonight. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a really beautiful, powerful image of not just something that happened 2,000 years ago, but some, some way that that can impact us, us today and we can be united in it in a symbolic way. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, we're going to hear more about one of your stories in a minute of a life transformed. But just to say, there's an invitation tonight. Um, so six o'clock, we're getting together again here. It's going to be jam-packed again because Kezia and Sean are going to be um, baptized. And you'd be so welcome to come and hear their story as they hear, share with us how they personally have trusted in Jesus and how this being baptized is a picture of what God has done in their lives as they've trusted in him and experienced him bringing forgiveness and new life. So do come tonight, 6 p.m. But while you're thinking about that invitation, I think it's time for another song. So Lydia's still here. Lydia, come and join us again. We love that last song. Could you tell us a bit about what this next, the second and last song um, is about? Thank you so much. Um, so this song is called Known, and it links really beautifully to what Faye was saying earlier um, about being known fully God knows us completely, inside out, all our flaws, um, everything we've done wrong, and he still loves us fully, and that gives us a chance to have new life and to start again.
Thank you so much. I often find when I hear a song, um, it kind of just keeps resonating the rest of the day. And those words are really poignant and powerful, aren't they? I'm fully known and loved by you. Isn't that incredible? And that is Lydia singing to a God who knows her all the way through, and yet she's confident that he loves her. One of the amazing things about that conversation at the well in John chapter 4 was that the woman who'd been hiding now runs back to the village and says, come meet somebody who told me everything I ever did. I don't know how you'd feel if you met somebody who could tell everyone else everything that you'd ever done. But what was it about this Jesus? Well, she'd realized that yes, he knew everything. He fully knew her. He fully knew her history. He fully knew her brokenness. And yet he loved her right to the bottom. And she didn't understand the whole story yet. But coming up was when Jesus was going to die on a cross as though he was guilty for everything that she had done. And then he was going to rise from the dead to show that all of that wrongness had no authority over her or anyone else who would trust in him. So it's a remarkable song to be listening to, fully known and yet loved by him. What an amazing song. Thank you, Lydia. You might want to talk to Lydia more about the songs that she shares. Encourage her to do some more too. Thank you. Well, let's ask Faye a, a bit more, Faye. Um, you know, can you, you, what a song. Uh, can you relate? to that song yourself. Oh, it's such a beautiful song, isn't it? it and is. uh, yes, I totally can relate to it myself. And um, I think, um, yeah, I could tell you a bit of the story of um, how I came to realize that there was somebody, a God that knew me and cared about me. Mm. And um, I, the first song as well made me remember a time in my life where I was feeling quite lonely. Um, I'd, I'd uh, grown up in, with a lovely family, lovely parents, and, um, but I, I was given a lot of freedom as a young person, and um, so I spent a lot of my time as a, a young, younger person, um, sort of partying and, um, and you know, drinking and, uh, you know, had lots of um, friendships and relationships, and... Uh, and I think that I was sort of trying to squeeze a bit of the, you know, the juice out of life, trying to get as much fun out of it as I possibly could. And, um, and I remember there being a time after many years of having, you know, gone through this sort of trying to make the most of life and um, where I, I didn't have um, any, I wasn't in a relationship and I was feeling quite sad and broken and um, some, my friendship group had dumped me and um, I felt really hurt and um, I was about to start at university and I remember feeling as I started at university that oh, this is like a whole new chapter. Um, you know, I, I don't have any friends. My friends have let me down. I feel quite hurt. I don't actually know what life is about and why I'm here. And I started asking bigger questions um, about, you know, why am I on the planet? And, um, and then that was a time where I met, um, I met a person who um, had a faith and um, they expressed their their faith to me when I prodded them and asked them questions about it. And I just felt that this friend of mine had a lot of vigor and energy and life seemed to make sense to them. So when I asked them, what is it that makes your life different? They expressed that they um, knew there was a God who loved them, that... Um, that was in, uh, that wanted to, uh, that knew them completely and uh, that wanted to be involved in their life and, and that gave them purpose for every day. And so I became really curious about that. And um, so one day I actually went into my room um, and, and was given a Bible to read. And my friend actually said to me, if you want to... Uh, you know, before you open the Bible, why don't you actually ask God if he'd speak to you through the Bible? And um, it, this, this was really challenging to me because I really remember a time in my life where I'd heard some good news about Jesus wanting to know me and, and that where I had a choice of trusting in Jesus as a younger person. 
Um, and, uh, and I really clearly remember going, no thanks, not right now. I'll do that later, you know, maybe when life gets boring or something. And I, I kind of just remember going no to God. I didn't want God in my life because I felt like it was going to ask too much of me. But at this point in my life, I was really hungry to know, you know, why I'm here and know a deeper purpose. So I did actually start to pray. But I remember thinking, I can't ask God to speak to me. I've, I've pushed him out my life for so many years. What right have I to ask him? And as I thought that thought, I remembered that Jesus had died for me and that all my wrongs and my turning my back on God was dealt with by Jesus dying for me. So I just started saying thank you that Jesus died for me. And, and I remember saying, you know, I'd like to be in this relationship thing with you, God, but, you know, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be rubbish at it, so I'm going to need your help. And would you speak to me through the Bible? And as I, as I opened the Bible, the words that I read just blew me away because they were about the... Um, the clay and the potter, and I was doing a degree in ceramics at the time, so I'm squishing clay every single day, and I'm obsessed with clay, and, um, and it was just amazing that he spoke to me about um, me being like a pot, and um, him being the master potter, and, and that he loves me, and I was so moved by this verse that I read, that um, I was, it, it was no question, there was no question, God has just spoken to me, and I've, I've really been touched by it. And as I then prayed on and, and put my trust in him, I just remember feeling that, you know, that some other dimension, something had opened up that was going to be bigger in my life. And, um, and now I walk with him each day, you know, knowing him in my life, and whether it's a good day or a bad day, God cares. He's with me on the hilltops and in the valleys. And, and I guess like that woman, that Samaritan woman, I have come away from that experience and the knowledge of knowing his love for me has made me want to run back into the town, as it were, and gossip the gospel, you know, gossip, gossip about Jesus to everybody um, through my work. And that's what I'm trying to do is, is share through my work, you know, that we can be this jar of clay that's fragile, but we can contain in us something so beautiful and this new life that we talked about this week. We can be cleansed and washed and filled with God's spirit and life can have purpose and meaning. Faye, that's really moving and beautiful and really connects with the account in John chapter 4 of the woman at the well and reflects what we've been hearing through this, this whole uh, morning and is reflected in your sculpture too. Thank you so much. Well, we're coming towards the end of our time together this morning and often, you know, the very valuable part of our time together is, is the conversations now with those you've come with and those you're sitting next to on the table or if you want to come and talk to some of those who've shared this morning. I want to just share with you a couple of invitations. Um, on the way out just here, in fact, some of you were picking up on the way in. That's all right. But there's on the way out as well, there is this, um, there's this document, there's this book it's called, it's a journal, really. Half of it is blank, and half of it has text on it. And it's one of the um, documents from the New Testament. It's written by an eyewitness of Jesus' life. His name was John. And he shared many of the most intimate moments with Jesus as his life was unfolding. And it's been, it was written down in Greek, incredibly. It's been preserved, and there's a whole science of how we can be certain that what we're reading is what John wrote down. And then, of course, it's been translated into English so that we can relate to it and understand it. And so there are a number of these just on your exit on the right-hand side, and you'd be so welcome to take one of these. You might 
want to write notes in here of things that strike you and then talk to a friend about it over a coffee. If you're an artist, you might want to do some sketches in here of, of some of the scenes that you see unfolding in this account. And at the heart of it all, we meet this person of Jesus. In John chapter 3, he's meeting an older man at night time. In John chapter 4, he's meeting this woman with this history that we've been hearing about this morning. And as you read on, you read about lives transformed, but then resonating through it all is this invitation for this Jesus, because he's not dead, he's come alive, for the same Jesus to bring transformation into your life too. So please take it, and uh, we'd love to see none left. And go home and just reflect on this. And as this uh, spring unfolds with the new life breaking all around us, there's an invitation for you personally to experience a new life too. So do take um, one of those. I just found those words of Jesus as he was at the well um, with this woman. Um, so moving. Um, he's speaking to her. And uh, here are the words. We had them on the on the screen already. These are some of the words straight out of that document, out of John's account of Jesus' life. And he talks about this gift of God. So often, I think we think it's all about how we make our way to God by our own power. Well, we've been hearing about a gift of God, a gift of God this morning, something that he gives to us. And if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. What an intriguing phrase. What an intriguing picture as they sit by the well and Jesus using this language of thirst and of water as he talks to this woman. And then further down in that conversation, he explains everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. As I read through these documents, I often get out a coloring pen and, and kind of color it in. And leaping off the page there three times is emphasized this that it's a gift of God. It's something that God comes towards us to give. And that gift of God is as Jesus himself comes. He comes, God among us. He makes broken people unbroken, like the woman at the well. He even makes dead people rise again. Hungry people are filled. Thirsty people, well, they are satisfied. And it's a, a water, an intervention that he gives and it talks about this water. It's not just about something that we drink, but it's about something that wells up inside of us. It's a picture of, of God's work in the person who trusts in him. We can't bring about new life. But God comes in the person of Jesus to give us this gift of new life. And over Easter time here at Oak Hall Church, this message has been resonating that there's a God who is there and he comes in the person of Jesus. And he gives his life. He dies on a cross. In fact, as he dies on the cross, he says, I'm thirsty. And we realize that he became thirsty so that we could have our thirst for life in all its fullness, our thirst for forgiveness, that that thirst could be satisfied because of his death and his resurrection. And all of Easter, and actually all of this document of John's that we're invited to take, all of this week of art, it's all been woven through with an invitation you see, there's a God who's there and he loves us. And he says yes. He says yes to us. And he invites us, like Faye, he invites us to respond to him and say, say yes to him. You know, through the art week, we haven't kind of stopped people and, and read verses. There's been verses kind of written out. We haven't stopped people and prayed together. But you know, just as we come to the end of this art week with all of its invitation and all of its speaking and pointing towards the person of Jesus, we are going to pray. 
And we're going to pray the kind of prayer that many people in this room have actually prayed in their lives already. As they've come to the God of heaven and said to him, look, I'm sorry for all the wrong things that I've done. Thank you that you have come to the rescue in the person of Jesus. Thank you that you die so that I could have life in all its fullness, so that I could have my thirst quenched. Please forgive me. Please be my king. And if you pray that prayer with me in a moment, as you leave, you might also just want to take one of these booklets. It's a lovely booklet written by a, somebody who's a friend of, of some of ours. And it says yes on the front, kind of graffiti yes. And it explains about how God, he says yes to us in the person of Jesus. And how he invites us to say yes to him in response. As we come to him in a turning away from our wrongness, a repentance. Come to him asking for forgiveness. Asking him to be the Lord of our lives. So we're going to pray together and then we'll just close with a couple more practical invitations. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new life art week that we have shared. Thank you for all the people who've been involved, whether exhibiting or coming to see and hearing this whispered invitation to come to you and experience the satisfaction that we long for, to come to you and receive the new life that you wait to give. And perhaps this morning, as we sit around these tables, some of us want to say, we can sense your call, we can sense our wrongness before the God of heaven who is so clean and so right. We can realize how we have been trying to work life out by ourselves and perhaps climb our own way towards you, but we realize that's just futile. We're never going to make it on our own. And yet this morning we're hearing how you have come in the person of Jesus to take our wrongness, to die in our place. You invite us to turn around, to turn the opposite direction, instead of living for ourselves, to live for you and to receive this gift of new life. And so this morning, some of us, perhaps for the first time, we want to say, I'm sorry for the ways that I've been trying to make myself right. I'm sorry for the ways I've been pushing you out of my life. I'm sorry for the wrong things that I've done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you die on the cross for me in my place so that I can be forgiven. As though it was all your fault when it was all my fault, you took all the blame on, as you died on that cross. Thank you for that loving kindness that you died for me. Please, Jesus, forgive me. Please, Jesus, be my king. I want to live for your glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you that we can talk to the God of heaven together. And if this morning you've been speaking to God like that for the first time, please pick up one of these little leaflets. It says yes. It's, it's how God says yes to you and how you are saying yes to him. And if you're thinking about these things, and perhaps you're thinking, I wish I did. I do want to pray that kind of prayer. Well, just pick up one of these leaflets. Just take it away and go and respond to the God of heaven who invites you. You know, we've got all sorts of opportunities to think about these things together here at Oak Hall Church. Of course, we're together again this evening at 6 p.m. And we're going to listen as Kezia and Sean share their stories. And they're baptized. They're actually baptized. Underneath us here, there's a big pool of water. And they're going to be baptized in there. So come at 6 and be a part of that. Next week at 11, we're back. Oh, sorry, at 10.30, 10.30. We're back here again, a little bit different, but we're again speaking about this big message of new life. 
And then on Monday the 15th of April, Monday the 15th of April, we're invited to come to be a part of this special series of events called Christianity Explored. And again, on your table, there's a postcard inviting you to that. Christianity Explored, it starts on Monday the 15th at 7.30 p.m. We'd be so glad for you to be a part of that. But if you've prayed that, do pick up that little leaflet. But also, talk to somebody you've come with. Talk to a friend. Tell them that you have made this step. And as you share this with somebody else, they will be delighted to share that. And they'll be helping you too, to point you to ways that you can grow as you walk with the Lord Jesus who comes. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this New Life Art Week, for sharing this morning with us. Now is perhaps the best bit as we just keep talking around our tables. The music will fade back in. There's going to be some, uh, we've got to finish up these refreshments too. You might want to come up and have a look at the work. And there's plenty of time now um, before, um, as we just share this time together. But let's just one more time say thank you to those who've been involved. And as we give a round of applause as the music comes back. Thank you. Thank you.